Well, hello everyone. My name is Caleb Lighty. I'm here with Carly Logan. We'll get to introducing ourselves here in a moment. We're going to be talking today about why companies can't afford not to have an MSP or an MSSP. You got to love our double negatives, don't we, Carly? So as we can see, I am Caleb Lighty. Uh, my background is as a uh, CMMC and NIST consultant. Uh, spent some time with the DIBCAC after coming out of the Navy, where I worked with the Navy Blue Team and Navy Expeditionary Intelligence Command. Uh, spent some time as a contractor at DCMA, and then moved on to the DIBCAC there. Uh, I am a CMMC PA and PI, and a CCP and a CCA, and all the CCCCCs. And Carly, you're right there as well. Absolutely. Um, Carly Logan, and also work as a security analyst here at Summit 7 um, as CMMC in this contractor. I worked for DC3 as a cyber forensics instructor and investigator for several years before moving to the Department of Energy in their cyber forensic lab. I was an ISSO, ISSM, helped stand up their cybersecurity program, and I have 20 plus years in NIST, in implementing and assessing NIST. It's a good background. It was fun, fun background. So here's the things we're going to talk about today. We've got uh, some of the management strategies that companies can use as they're going through their CMMC process. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the shared responsibility. And then, Carly, I'll hand it over to you to talk about how we can utilize internal teams, kind of the cost comparison between you know going at it alone uh, versus having an MSP or an MSSP on your side. And we have some success stories from some of seven clients. So our management strategy, getting your CMMC ducks in a row. We've got our implementation, right? And that's one of the, the main points that we get into in CMMC is that we have companies that say, well, we, we got this cloud service or we got this MSP and it said CMMC level two on it, so we're, we're probably good to go. But there's a lot more after that implementation piece, right? Either whether you have a cloud service or you, you implement your own network, there's more after that that you need to actually manage through the life cycle to be CMMC compliant or just in a good place in general. One of the things that's talked about in Android 171 is a cybersecurity program, right? So um, that's where folks kind of get away from, hey, we've got the requirements in place, but do you have a program, right? Do you have a program and are you managing these things? Um, so the maturity of your program, we talk about change management configuration management. Uh, if we get to asset management, right, we, we first go into like, what do we have? What do we have here? What are we managing? What types of uh, categorized assets do we have if we look at the CMMC scoping guide? Those types of things. Um, and then how are we managing those? So do we have baselines, right? And that's part of the requirements, but do we truly have baselines? Do we know what's in our environment? Do we know how we're managing it? And then do we have a good change management process where if anything changes, we're documenting that and we know that, right? Uh, vulnerability management and incident response management. Again, little pieces within the framework on um, requirements around those, but do you have a full mature program that you're actually using to manage those different pieces? So what goes into those, right? When we talk about an actual mature program, You've got the standards that you're dealing with, so we have 800-171 or CMMC, uh, but we also have to look at a lot of other things. What does it take from a budget and resources uh, perspective to actually manage that program? What are your responsibilities, right? Our, our racing matrix that we use to run that program. What are our standards and procedures and uh, policies around that particular program? Right, so there's a, a lot that you have to actually think of outside of, hey, we've met the requirement right, that things don't end there, right? We have to continue on, we're building a program. And if you build these programs from the ground up, meeting the requirements just kind of comes along as, a, as an extra. So um, outside of just implementing the technology and implementing the requirements, you have to build these programs up and really manage them. Moving into the shared responsibility, sharing is caring, right? Uh, we talk about uh, a lot at Summit 7, our shared responsibility matrix, um, what we do on behalf of our clients, uh, but also understanding what our, our clients need to do for themselves. Right? And, and just to interject, this is where 
in the last couple of slides where you were talking about all the things that go into the program, this is where a client doesn't have to go it alone. Absolutely. We can help, or an MSP can help. Yes, but also understanding that we can't do it alone for you either, right? <laughs> right. That's a big part. It's your program. <laughs> yes, um, and, and that's often missed, right? Uh, there's, there's been various times throughout the building of the CMMC program where we've had different regulatory pieces come out and uh, folks will say, well, you know, this cloud provider is FedRAMP and they do CMMC level two stuff. So we're going to get a subscription and we're going to be good to go. Right. And they've heard success stories, right? We're going to get into our success stories, but they've heard uh, CMMC or DIBCAC high success stories where companies have leveraged those cloud providers or leveraged a particular MSP and gone through and, hey, they got a perfect 110 score. Um, but that's not realizing that that organization also did more on the back end than just purchase a subscription, right? Uh, so when we look at the, the cloud shared responsibility model, this is what I call the true responsibility model, um, where we can, it's very clearly delineated based on what you're doing and what you buy. Uh, you have that cloud provider's responsibilities because those are the things that they own. And then you have your responsibilities because it's the things that you own and control. Uh, one of the ones that we're most familiar with, of course, is FedRAMP. Uh, it's a good standard to go off of for how folks in this industry are dealing with cloud providers and the, the regulations, things around that. Um, and one of the things that is in the FedRAMP playbook is uh, this control implementation statement workbook. So it talks about how that provider is implementing controls uh, within their own environment and on your behalf. And it also talks about the thing that, things that the client or the consumer of that service needs to be doing. Um, one of the, the pieces in that control implementation statement is where that control originates from. Right, so is the, is the cloud provider doing that? Uh, should the customer be doing that? Or is it something that a provider gives you from a technology side, and then in order to make it custom to you and make it work for you, both operationally and from a compliance perspective, are there things that you need to configure and, and do? Uh, so I called that one out in particular, the, the configured by customer, because that just goes to show, like. Yes, there is this model, and there's a lot of things that are being given to you, but you can't just leave it there. Right. They're not going to configure themselves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody could for you. I know a good, good source for that. Yeah. Um, also in that is the uh, control or the customer responsibility matrix workbook. Um, so you have to look at the control perspective and say, is this control that we're putting in place going to be uh, owned by the provider and inherited by the cons consumer um, or not. So they give a couple examples for what cannot be or what might partially be in, in their workbook, but they don't give any examples of what would be inherited. Um, so I pulled one out, you know, physical access authorizations. If you're, if you're working in a cloud you know, space, Outside of your physical area, if you do everything in the cloud, then that data center, that physical place where that cloud provider is operating from, they're going to own those physical access controls. You don't have control over that. That's not your company. Right? So that's a, a good example of what would typically be inherited from a cloud provider. Well, here we are. We're at the end of the event. You made it. You made it, uh, I don't know, half a day. So thanks for committing with us today. We're so glad you joined. Uh, portions of the recording will be available, but you can watch the whole thing on demand and uh, share it with your colleagues, all those sorts of things. So our team will be in touch. We'll have the right content for you. But wait, 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 wait. Don't leave yet. For everybody who attended today, we're going to have a special discount code to our next CS2. 
What's CS2? It's the Cloud Security and Compliance Series. And we're going all the way from the beach to the Rockies. CS2 Denver, here we come. We're going to talk about CMMC, NIST 800-171, all the things we talked about today, plus more with Microsoft leadership, DOD leadership, Summit 7 experts, and people from industry. So come collaborate, network with us. It's going to be a ton of fun. We look forward to seeing you at CS2 Denver. Thanks for joining Secure the Dib Virtual Summer. We'll see you next time.